Welcome back to Spirit of Life. I'm Dave McLaughlin, and my guest this week is Mark Bateman from Chaplaincy Australia. Welcome back to the program, Mark. Thanks, mate. Now, um, can you tell us a bit about Chaplaincy Australia's transporters? What were they, what are they, and how did the idea come about? As we talked in our last program, um, I'm a petrol head. Um, something that I've always wanted to do is present God well in the in the community. Um, and being uh, in motorsport, you ought to see some of the spectacular transporters that these uh, car car enthusiasts and uh, racing car teams have. The last thing I wanted to do was to rock up at a racetrack with this little boxy caravany thing on the back of you know, of a car and and have the guy say, oh, here comes the Christians. Yeah, so, <laughs> so I wanted to have uh, something that had a bit of a wow factor about it. So we went big. We, had a, we got a Chevy in from the States and, and we put a 44-foot transport on the back of this Chevy. And in the Chevy, there's, there's four key areas. There's a, a bedroom which can be used as, a, as, a, as a, um, a, a ward, hospital ward. There's an area where we can look after people who are, um, are supporting family who are in maybe the medical room and uh, we can do all our peer support there. There's a kitchen and there's a toilet shower and um, then there's triage area and the triage area is if we've got someone who's had an incident then that's where we can you know, provide some, some uh, medical support with that. And then the back area is uh, another area we use for can increase the size of the medical room or it can be used as a storage area or if we're going out to other activities where we need a motorbike, we can put a motorbike in the back. But what, what happened was the use of the transporter morphed away from what its original concept was. It was particularly there to help be a backup to motorsport. Um, but over time, uh, some of my motorsport friends who are involved in police work or ambulance work, uh, there were major incidents that had happened in our in our country, and and we were asked, could, would the transporter be available to help us out with that? And you know, for example, when the Mildura incident happened, where those fifteen young people were skittled by a car, and five died there, and one died later in hospital. Tom died later in hospital. Um, we were asked, can the transporter be used? And so we dragged it up there to Mildura, and here we were on the roadside helping out with. Uh, and doing our chaplaincy work right there in the marketplace, right in the middle of this horrific unfolding of uh, these young people's loss of life. Um, and we did all the peer support to all the family members that were all coming out to the incident. And uh, that got the attention of, um, of the authorities and uh, others then asked if we could come out. And we've traveled all over Australia. We were up in Innisfail at the Cyclone uh, Cyclone Larry destroyed up there for nine weeks and um, the Mackay floods, we've been there, we've been to the Kerrang train versus truck wreck that happened uh, recently and uh, that sort of has opened up another as expression of chaplaincy so um, we had to go ahead and build another transporter, T2 and we just got T3 under construction, almost finished now um, but really it's a great tool to use as a backup to help um, our uh, communities when tough times come. Um, we're actually just planning a T4 at the moment which will take on a new role. We're going to use that up through the bushfires um, areas to do carriage by candlelight. So it'll be uh, one with a, quite a large stage opening on the side and we'll be able to do that and plus take the transporter to motorsport events and get men to have uh, some VIP time together. Uh, at motorsport events and, and uh, also it'll be an accommodation vehicle when we go out to a disaster where we need additional chaplains and we can accommodate them in that vehicle as well. So these transporters now become a great resource, a great tool to help us get the job done. Now it sounds like you deal a lot with situations of trauma. So um, how do you think you as chaplains respond in a unique way to helping people deal with trauma. I mean, there are obviously, you know, people like psychologists and psychiatrists to deal with that um, in situations where yeah. it happens. But why do you think that it's important uh, for you as chaplains to, to 
be there also and yeah. to be trained in, in dealing with uh, I think there's probably two key reasons. Uh, first reason is, and I think it's because, um, you know, Paul says in Thessalonians, may your spirit, soul, and body be preserved to the day of the Lord's return. Mm -hmm. I think it's so important that we don't just try and tackle just a soulish issue or a body issue. There is, people are, are spirit beings as well. Um, and in our last uh, census, some 67% of Australians said they believe in God. So I think that it's imperative that we do a whole person response. And that's where we can very uniquely niche in and complement the work of people who are doing mental uh, assistant issues and also physical uh, helping issues. Then we do some of the spiritual uh, ministry issues, but that's not our primary focus. Our focus is to support people there in that scenario. So when it comes to um, uh, helping a person, uh, a story, I suppose, would be good. Um, we were up at Kerrang following the, the train wreck and you know, a young mum whose 13-year-old son was, was missing, presumed dead, and she was crying on the floor. And uh, as I came in, I was introduced to several other of the professionals that were there. And, and uh, after a chance to be able to um, say hello to everybody, then I sat down with this lady on the floor who was weeping on the floor with tears falling from her face, loss of her, of her, of her boy. Um, when I sat on the floor uh, next to her, she just turned and gave me this huge hug. And I'm sort of very awkward, uh, like all these professionals who are watching me and well, what am I going to do? And sort of 15 minutes, she's hugging and crying on my shoulder and all of a sudden she pushes off and she says, who are you? I says, I'm the chaplain. She says, oh good. And she came <laughs> back and hugged me again. And um, with that sort of, uh, you know, her crying and, and I said to her then, listen, you know I'm the chaplain now. Can I have a word of prayer? Let's ask God to come alongside and help you at this time. And she said, I'd love that. And so I, you get the privilege to be able to pray and, and to uh, minister that, to that whole person need. And so I, uh, after the prayer, asking God to come alongside, just to help this dear poor mum's uh, heart right now. And so um, uh, she gets up on a chair and she says, I feel so much better. Thank you for that. I go and get her a cup of coffee. and. One of the professionals said, I'm glad you chaplains are here. I said, why? They said, well, our professional code of conduct doesn't let us give people hugs. And so we have uh, a very unique role that we play where we meet uh, the whole person's need and, mm. and, and, uh, and support them through that crisis. And On that note, we have to go for another short break. You're watching Spirit of Life. We'll be back after this break. Oh, Lord, 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 Lord. 